Hi everybody, it's Monica from Pear Tree Treasures. I'm here to share with you the tutorial for the shadow box book that I created for Country Craft Creations. I used the Echo Park A Perfect Christmas paper for this one and if you want to see the little details, I did a review and it's on a separate video on my channel. Okay, for these supplies you're gonna need some ribbon of some type if you're gonna do it exactly like this. I, Tamara had sent me the, oh my gosh, what's this? The seam binding from countrycraftcreations.com. I also got the Echo Park A Perfect Christmas Collection from Tamara Store as well. I used art glitter glue. You're gonna need a scoring tool of some type. Okay, and here, if you're going to do what I did, these are uh, transparency film and you can get it at Staples. It's pretty expensive. Um, you can also use like, you know, they have packaging. It's pretty thin stuff as you can see. Acetate, I think you can get a thinner acetate. Um, I have really thick acetate for when I do windows and buildings and that won't work in here. Okay, so let's get started. So what you're going to need as well is some artisan cardstock or any type of cardstock you have. But if the artisan cardstock is really awesome and you can get that at Tamara store as well, tell her Monica sent you. Okay. And what we're going to do, oh my gosh, you're trying to rip it. Okay. So we need two 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock and we're also going to need one piece of cardstock at six inches by one and five eighths of an inch. I'm just going to measure this and make sure. Yep, one and five eighths. And you're going to need two additional pieces at four and three eighths by an inch and three quarters. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to score everything all at once. I'm going to put this thing away. I'm just going to move my camera back here a little bit. There. Now you can see that. Okay. So, what I've done for you guys is I've made a template so that if you want to push pause on this video, you can. And you can refer back to this for cutting and scoring measurements okay so at this point this is where you would want to push pause what I've done here this is what you cut away okay and I just put little lines so that you know and I wrote cut away on it can't mess it up I will still mess it up on occasion okay puppy hair look oh. okay now I'm going to take your 12 by 12 piece and your scores are going to be as follows. Three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, two and one quarter inch, three inches, nine inches, nine and three quarters, ten and a half, and eleven and one quarter. Then what you're going to do is you're going to rotate it and you're going to do the same thing on this side so go three quarters of an inch inch and a half two and one quarter three inches nine nine and three quarters ten and one half and eleven and one quarter okay that's what you have so far then what I want you to do is go to the three and three quarter mark and I want you to score down but I want you to only score to this line okay three and three quarters down to the center score line eight and one quarter down to the center score line take the paper rotate it and rotate it so that the lines that you just did are at the bottom and do the same thing. Three and three quarters down to the inside score line. 
and eight and one quarter down to the inside score line. And there you have it. Do that twice. For both sheets. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to take your six inch piece by inch and five eighths piece. Okay. I'm going to zoom this in for you one notch so you can see a little better. Okay, and what I want you to do is, this is the Martha Stewart scoreboard. The reason we're going to do this is so that when you're putting your book together, okay, so here's the spine, this is this piece here. When you're putting your book together, you always end up with a little space here. So you need to add a little extra cardstock onto this piece so that it fits flush edge to edge okay so the way I do this is I take the measurement of these two and I always add on an eighth of an inch okay because that just leaves enough room for space so you take your inch and five eighths side and on this scoreboard you will see there's a separate little arrow here Okay, and what I do is I just move this over to that line. And the reason they have this here, I think, is to uh, make boxes or thicker envelopes. Or if you're putting a lid on a box, um, you can adjust the box with this. There's different reasons for having it. Anyway, so now you know what that little arrow is for. So I'm going to move it to this line, and then I'm going to score it at... I believe, oh boy, hold on, I'm gonna make sure I got this right. Seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's your spine piece. Then what I want you to do is take your four and a quarter piece, or sorry, four and three quarter, uh, four and three eighths piece by inch and three quarters, and I want you to score it at quarter inch intervals and then do that right across the whole sheet okay so you're gonna do that twice all right somebody's having a bad dream Now when they're scoring, you put it away. Then what I want you to do is I want to take one. I want you to take one of your sheets. You can use the, uh, your trimmer for this. I don't like to use the trimmer for this. You can use scissors for this. Whatever your preference is. And I'm going to use these scissors first. So you guys can see this a little better and I can hold it up. So your first cut lines, what I want you to cut is the short score lines that you made. I'm going to use my knife because it's faster for me. Turn it around. Now, the reason I cut these is because then it's a guide and I won't end up cutting the wrong spots. I use it as a guide for myself because God knows I've cut enough of these wrong pieces here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trimming away just on this piece. You don't have to be too precise. It all comes together pretty smooth. Um, I just trimmed away the score line and you actually don't want to do too much of that because when you cut it direct on the line and don't put this gap in here, you'll see, I did this purposely to show you guys what happens if you do this. 
okay? So that's our first mark. I'm gonna go beside those, cut another one here. Okay. All right. So now we have this. We're gonna do this side as well. to cut these pieces out. with this okay so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut this off and I cut here and cut here so you're gonna be left with this and what I like to do scissors go a little straighter and I have a just enough blade to cut this properly, and you're gonna cut that. So this is what you have, and this is what you're gonna end up with for all four corners. Okay, so I'm done all the sides. Now what I want you to do is bend back your score lines and don't burnish too hard because I find if you don't, see how this pops back up? It helps keep the box a little rigid. Um, it's your preference. You can try it either way. Let me know how the other way works out for you. If not, what I do is I just use my fingers. I don't use a burnishing tool. If you have arthritis or something and you don't want to use your fingers, then you can just lightly do that. You do not want to go too hard. Because like I said, see how it's popping up? It's actually going to help you in the end making this box. So go ahead and roll all of these over and just burnish with your fingers. Now we have this, and we're going to do these two sides first, and you'll see why in a second. Let me garbage. Put the lid on my knife so I don't gash myself. Puppy's enough gashing for now. Okay, so I'm going to start with this side. I'm going to put my glue here. Again, if you're really good with score tape, you can use score tape. I don't use score tape for these because then I have a little bit of wiggle room because when you set it down, you might want to readjust your square. Okay, so now here's the reason I told you to start at these ends. There's a hole there. And because you can't get any kind of um, like a clothespin or anything to hold it together, you want to just take this. Oh, wrong one this you can use a paintbrush um, put the end of like the blunt end of your paintbrush like this you can use that to get in there and just push down but don't do what I just did and lift up like that because you'll end up bending your cardstock okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this in here and just help that glue out a little bit stick to the paper I'll do this on, oops, on this side as well Okay, and do it to the opposite side. Now, you can leave this set to dry. 
I'm going to show you. So this was the side. Hold on. This side over here is the side that I took the extra sixteenth of an inch sliver out. And as you see, it left a pretty big gap there. Okay. Now, when you're doing this and you go to glue it, you can hold it together. And I mean, we are going to put, you're probably going to put matting all over this and you won't see it so much. But for me, I'm a little neurotic. So if it bothers you, that's why I don't take out um, that much of my score line. Okay. Because it, when it sits naturally, there's a pretty big gap there. And all these ones sit pretty flush. Right? So that's why you don't want to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is glue over top of here first. All right. And don't forget, there's a hole there, so you don't need to put glue on this one. Okay, just on this one, not that one. I'm going to push this together. And I like to put it on the table and just kind of hold it there for a minute. Then we know it's flat. All right, there's one. Now at this point, if you have a little bit hanging off the edge here, you can just use your craft knife and trim it off or get a pair of scissors, which I'm gonna just use my craft knife. Here's my craft knife and I'm going to gently trim this off and I'm not pushing hard on this at all okay because if you do you're gonna end up buckling your paper and crushing your box that you just made so see there's just a little tiny little sliver I took off of there okay so have this one done this okay Not flat and I'm just gonna hold this to get the gist so now what you can do is do all four sides See on this one here, a little too much, so I just pulled that glue back up before it set, and I'm just going to trim some of this off. Because I'm neurotic. Can't help it. OCD, I guess. I haven't been diagnosed, so self diagnosis there. trim. There's a little piece. Get my box off. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to take these tabs. Tip of the day. Don't do what I do all the time. Okay? Dry fit it first. Make sure it fits. Cut it before you glue it. Probably easier for everybody else. I'm weird like that. Sometimes I forget. So, and I'm pretty good handy dandy with this thing. So, just letting you know. Dry fit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to glue this. Up here first. I'm only going to do the first up to this score line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. And I'm going to hold it down. Like this. Okay, so now we're at this point here. Now, if you, I'm going to show you my original one. What I did 
with this one is I just folded these over okay and that is what you see here let me focus in see what we got here okay okay so here I don't know if you can see that I just folded it over okay and I thought that looked kind of cool and that's why I put this just a little notch in there with one of my punches okay but Fix this again. For this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so the corners are tapered. So I want to do that obviously before I glue it down. So I'm going to go this way from the outside. And you got to make sure you're flipping it this way. Okay, flip it back out and just cut it right to the corner. Okay. Now, because of this, I can do this. So, for this one, instead of matting it like this, I can actually now take this, put it down, okay, and I can do that. And it's like a little decorative corner, right? I like that. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. Okay. This mat is going to be... I'm going to use this side. This side's nicer. Actually, I ink the edge too. So the mat for this one is going to be 5 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths. I hate having to choose, but oh well. Okay, I'm gonna put this down first. There we go. And I'm gonna do this. Now this mat is just about an eighth of an inch smaller than the box. And this is another good thing about the art glitter glue. You can just line it up. And if you need to slide it around a little bit, you can. Okay. And then I'm gonna glue these little pieces down. To do that for all four pieces. Magically, I have two of these now. Isn't that great? Okay, now that looks really good actually with those corners like that. So, yeah, let's do a comparison. Yeah, that looks okay though, too. I really like this. I love this. Is my favorite corner punch ever. I have three of them in case I lose two. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is I want you to take your inch and five eighths piece and I want you to fold it in half, okay? And you're gonna have a little mountain like that, okay? So, here's how the box works. Boxes like this, you're gonna attach them on this end just so you can cover that up, right? So you're going to have it so your mountain sits in the middle and it's like that. Okay? So valley is facing up. Right? So now's the time to give it a little dry fit and see if you need to trim off any of the ends. And this one's pretty good. So I'm going to lay it down like that. So that's how it would go. Right? I'm gonna hold it up against it and then I'm just gonna set that like that so I don't glue the wrong side. Put my glue on here. And I'm gonna 
do one side at a time. All right. Pull this up to there. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that this edge is not sticking up very far. So before the glue sets, you can adjust it like that. Okay. Now in doing this, you're giving yourself a little extra room around the edge of the box for when you close it. So you'll see how that works out. Now I'm staying away from the score line that I have on the inside here. Okay, so I'm just staying to the this side of that score line. It'll, although it dries clear, you don't want your boxes sticking together accidentally. Okay. Look at that. I'm going to set this on here. And I'm going to line it up like so. Out a little bit, make my adjustments before my glue dries. Okay. And I do that. Wet wipe. Let's see the extra glue out of there. Okay. I am gonna set this aside for now and let that dry. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take these two pieces and we are going to make the insert which is a little channel okay that I used to stick this to it just gives it a little more 3D okay and this one here as well I put it on there so it kind of sticks out then you don't have to do use pop dots and stuff we might need those for lots of Christmas cards coming up, right? Okay, so here's your piece. What I want you to do is do your score lines and burnish first. So the first score line is here. That one's going to go back this way. So you're going to fold back on it. And when you're burnishing this, don't burnish too much or too hard on your second score line because then you're going to lose it and it's not going to help you. So the next one is basically like an accordion. So go back this way. Okay. And then we go back this way. And we kind of make sure they're straight. That helps. Okay. okay. All right. Now, we did that on the one side. So that is one our little pop-ups okay now we have a gusset in between here that's a quarter of an inch okay so we want to keep that and then what we're gonna do hold on what's the best way to show you guys so we need an accordion 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 so you're gonna not fold back on this one because in essence we want that to stay oh, wait a minute No, that's going to fold this way. Okay. You know when you're trying to explain things, sometimes you mess yourself up. I mean, I've done this hundreds and hundreds of times, but when you're explaining it, sometimes it just... I don't know, man. Okay. Like that. Okay. So that's what you're going to get. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take my art glitter glue and I'm gonna put it in, you'll see here now it's like you have two valleys going down inside. So I'm gonna put art glitter glue in this one and this one. And I am going to fold this over like that and I fold the other one over like that and I am going to 
burn shit down. Okay. Fold these back out. So I don't glue them. Okay. And I'm going to let that dry. Here's where you can use your clothespins and hold that down. So I want you to make two of those. So you're going to end up with this. Okay. So there's two of them. And what I want you to do is I want you to dry fit each one. Because when you're making these boxes, depending on where the score line folds, etc., etc., you're, it's not going to be exact. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But if you fit it in there and it's sticking out a little too far, just trim one of the edges on the outside. Okay? And then it should fit. Right? So there's one. And there's two. This one needs a trim. So this one here needs a trim both ways. It's very tight going in this way, so I'm just going to take this, strip it off a little bit. Okay, so it fits that way. And when I put it in here, now I've got this flattened out pretty good. When I put it in this way, it's sticking out. Okay. I am just going to give a little trim on the one edge and then I'm going to put this one in the back so you don't see it. So don't worry about cutting super straight or if you mess it up. Okay, so I've trimmed that down. So you can see this side now is much shorter than the other side. So put that side at the back if you've cut it improperly. If you want more 3D elements, if you, if you plan on sticking something in here, then you can leave the, the one that you didn't trim, leave it in like that. Okay. Now I'm not going to glue these in now because I'm going to do something with this. And uh, I like to put my embellishments on here first because trying to wrestle with this, that's when the uh, cuss words start flowing. So I'm going to do that later. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching. Visit countrycraftcreations.com to get all your supplies that you need. Tamara's awesome, and I'm sure she's got lots of other stuff that you guys might want to grab. Um, again, you can visit the Facebook page, which is Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations, and that's on Facebook. And if you do a join request, I'm sure Tamara would be more than happy to let you in there. And there's an awesome group of ladies, and everybody does so many awesome things. And it's just so inspirational. So everybody wants to go check that out. Again, subscribe to my YouTube so you can see my latest and greatest tutorials and previews and projects that I'm working on. Because it's Christmas. Christmas is coming. I know. So you want to get your craft on so you can get all your Christmas presents ready. Hey guys, have a great day.